the current time period so the, the current audit information that we're doing off, often happening on a yearly basis so these are things that we might group basically on a yearly basis in terms of the current file that we are working with so we have the adjusting entries we've got the audit plan and programs for that current audit of the current year working trial balance for the current audit current year we have the current financial statements and auditors reports for the current year the minutes for the current time period and the working papers so as we go through the audit then most of the, what we'll do is we'll take the current year from the last year <laughs> we'll we'll look at how everything was going to be formatted we'll start with the current year for this year and anytime we need to dip into those type of items that are going to be long term uh, type of contracts or something like that then we'll jump over to the permanent file where those things will be housed audit documentation format will typically include something like and, and different type of firms may have different formats of their working papers. Also note that working papers don't need to be the most formal type of working paper in order to be something that will be useful within audit evidence. But what we do want in the working papers and the more standardized the working papers are, are some of this, this type of, of necessary information that will be included in uh, this format. But, but as we go through this format, don't get the impression that uh, every type of working paper is going to be exactly the same or have it the exact same type of format. We wanna have this key information on it, and this is a good format to have uh, the audit documentation and working papers in. So we often have the heading, which would include the entity name, the title of the working paper, which of course will give us an idea of what this uh, working paper is trying to do or what evidence it's, it's providing for us, the entity's year end. So we wanna know what uh, year end this, this working paper is applied to. Then we have indexing and cross-referencing. These are going to be indications that provide a trail from financial statement to audit documentation. So we're going to use some type of indexing or references within our working paper, providing that trail from the financial statements to the audit documentation. This will become more apparent when we go through some examples of uh, the audit process of specific type of accounts. You can imagine basically us taking a trial balance labeling that trial balance and tick marking off in such a way that we can indicate which working paper is going to be tied to uh, which type of line item on the trial balance or the chart of accounts which we are auditing we want to basically be able to tie those things out uh, indexing and cross-referencing to do that then we have tick marks indications next to work paper items showing auditor actions and reviewer actions so we're, we're going to have then tick marks which are going to show the auditor action and reviewer action again this will become more apparent when we actually put together working papers for per particular assertions and account balances and just note that different types of organizations may use different types of methods for their tick marks and for their indexing and cross-referencing but we need to have some indication of the indexing and cross-referencing we need to know this information we need to know you know who's the entity we would like the title we want the entity's year end we want to know what the account is that we're working on and and who it is that's going to be putting together this information who it is that is going to be reviewing this information uh, and typically cpa firms will have a systematic set of formats in in order to do their indexing cross-referencing and tick marks documentation retentions documentation should be organized in such a way that evidence supporting financial statements amounts can be easily found so note as we store this documentation we want to think about down the line this supporting evidence obviously as we complete the audit as we do the work it's fresh in our mind and we can explain it to anybody if they were to ask about it but as time passes of course some of the people that worked on the audit may not even be in the same organization in the same firm anymore we want to make sure that we have the documentation in such a format that it does provide the necessary uh, evidence to support the opinion that is given and of course part of that is going to be the way that we organize part of that's going to be the way we cross reference and we use tick marks within the documentation auto documentation is property of the auditor this includes documentation prepared by the entity at the auditor's request so, and this is going to be an important distinction when we think about the working papers although the working papers the documentation we put together is about the company that we are auditing the working papers themselves are part of our audit so any working papers we put together as evidence is going to be part of the audit not something that's going to be the property of the company that includes working papers that we put together within the auditing process it also includes any kind of calculations that we ask from 
uh, the company to put together as part or in conjunction with the audit process. Documentation should be retained for a number of years from the completion date of the engagement, of the engagement per the Sarbanes-Oxley Act.